Everybody knows if you want to get a new job, a bigger job, a better job, your LinkedIn profile helps play a big role in getting to those career goals. Now, I like to deck out my LinkedIn profile and put lots of graphics and things, but that's just me. You've got to do you, and we are here to help you with that in this AP class, How to Rock Your LinkedIn Profile. It's going to get you closer to getting noticed. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining this segment on Rock Your Profile on LinkedIn. I'll be your host for this segment. My name is Kelly Grady. I'm a senior customer success manager working at LinkedIn out of the New York office. And so what we'll cover in this segment is why choose LinkedIn, how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, expanding your professional network, and sharing your voice as a thought leader. So when we think about why LinkedIn, there are so many social media platforms to choose from. We'll use the example of donuts. When we apply donuts on Facebook, we think about, I like donuts. Or on Instagram, we might share out a cool photo of our donut. Or maybe on Spotify, we tell everyone, I'm listening to donuts. But when we shift that to LinkedIn, we think of it as more of a professional mindset. Some examples in line with our donut theme is I hope to I operate a donut franchise one day. I'm looking for a job at a donut company. I have three years experience making donuts. You start to get the picture, right? It's all about having a different mindset. When we spend time on personal networks like Instagram or Facebook, we're learning more about our friends and personal interests or updates on entertainment. But shifting that over to LinkedIn, that's where our professional network lives. And you're investing time there, building out information on your career, understanding what your favorite brands are updating about, or keeping in the know on current affairs within your country and around the globe. And when we take into consideration the billions of real-time data points that are enabling you to connect with people and companies faster than ever in today's digital landscape, that's LinkedIn. We have over 700 million members now on our network with 55 million companies listed and over 90,000 schools. And when we apply and think about all of that data that's available to you, we also wanna keep in mind that nine out of 10 employers, they use LinkedIn during the hiring process to determine, is this the right fit for my company? Should I hire this person? And so that's where we wanna help all of you in optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Keep in mind, having a LinkedIn profile, there are some key benefits. And I'd like to highlight some quick and easy wins to why you should always have your LinkedIn profile up to date. And it's totally fine if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, it's never too late to start. Keep in mind, having a profile on LinkedIn, it creates a space for your professional journey to come to life, right? It goes into more detail with skills, projects, interests, certifications that explains what makes you unique. A resume can't offer that. It also allows professionals and employers to interact, learn, and contact you directly, and also highlights any recommendations or endorsements that you receive from others. So the first step here is we want to make sure that you have a great photo, right? No cropping photos from Instagram or Facebook. We want to make sure that you're using background that isn't distracting. Because members with profile, profile photos, they actually receive up to 21 times more views and nine times more connection requests. Keep in mind, you want to dress for the job that you want, including when you take this photo to list it on your profile. Smile and have a friendly expression and make sure that your face takes up a majority of the frame. Next, you want to edit your headline 
this is different than your current role at your current employ at your current company or employer. So your headline is an opportunity to show what you are, not just what you do, right? So when you're writing your headline, ask yourself, if this is the only thing someone sees, what does it say about me? Does this represent my professional brand and show why I am unique? And lastly, does it capture the two to three key elements of what I can bring to the table? So you can see here, we have some examples of professionals with unique headlines. Keep that in mind as you're building out your profile sections. This is also really important to add into your profile. When you go to click the me icon at the top of your LinkedIn homepage, you'll see on the right hand side of the page, click add new profile section. This is where you'll begin editing and adding your profile to include items such as your location and industry, work and internship experience, volunteer experience, education and certifications, skills, and programs or organizations that you're also affiliated with. Keep in mind, you can choose whether you want to display your education in your intro. The other piece, and this is something that people tend to skim over because it involves us writing more than just a few words. We wanna make sure that you're drafting a compelling summary as your summary is the best place for you to communicate your professional brand and put your own spin on your experience. So here's a really easy formula that we would recommend. Write one to two sentences about who you are, right? Maybe three to five sentences about your experience as a professional. You know, where do you come from? What's your background? What are some top skills that you have and what are your key passions? Maybe what do you do outside of your day-to-day -day job? Also include one to two sentences about your future goals for your professional career, as well as how other members are, um, how can they best engage with you? And keep in mind that in order for you to uh, show up in the search results of other members, we want to include a summary that has at least 40 words. So quick tip there. A few other quick wins on the profile. Always add in the industry that you're affiliated with, such as computer software. Members with industry information, they actually receive up to nine times more profile views and receive more than uh, or more than 300,000 people actually search by industry on LinkedIn. Always detail your work experience. Don't leave it blank. Don't assume that somebody will know what you did as the VP of global sales at ABC Sales Technology, right? And people with up-to-date positions and information that's detailed, they actually receive up to five times more connection requests, eight times more profile views, and 10 times more in-mail messages. Of course, any examples of projects, work, or from uh, your company that you've created, you can also upload that into your profile. So you can upload different photos, maybe an article, presentations or videos that highlight your work. And this gives a dynamic and visually appealing representation of your professional story. And last but not least, don't forget to request recommendations. Recommendations on LinkedIn, they're like references from people in your network. So when you go onto a member's profile connection, you wanna go ahead and click more and then request a recommendation. You can select your relationship to this person, indicate whether you worked with them in a particular role, and customize your message. So who should I ask to recommend me, right? So some things you might want to consider are maybe current or former managers, current or former colleagues, even those that you weren't uh, working directly on your team with, but maybe you worked closely with them in a different capacity, and people who have mentored or advised you professionally, including through nonprofit training programs. So now that we've built out our profile, we want to make sure that you're expanding your professional network on LinkedIn. And did you know 50% or more of hires actually result from a personal connection? 
So building out your professional network on LinkedIn is very, very important. And when we think about our connections on LinkedIn, we call those our first degree connections, right? And the power of networking is that our first degree connections have their own connections and those are our second degree. So we have that mutual connection of the first degree. It then evolves and expands to a third degree connection. And you'll see that on members' profiles, how you're connected to them. Are they first, second, or third degree? So this visualization here comes to light of how that'll work. The best way to network is looking at your second degree connections and seeing who is a mutual connection between you and that other person. So that when you add a personal message, reaching out, setting up time with them to talk, you can refer that mutual connection. Another quick way for you to discover existing connections is when you click on my network in the top navigation to find people you already know, including friends and family, current and former colleagues, current and former managers. Keep in mind our people you may know feature improves over time as you build your network. An easy way to search for new connections is to also leverage the search bar in the top navigation. And you can filter out by name, company, location, and keyword. You can also filter out by your second degree connections here. That's low hanging fruit where you know that it's guaranteed that you and that person have a mutual connection. When you're searching for these new connections, once you click connect, you can actually send that, uh, that individual a personalized message. And we highly recommend this. You always wanna add in a note and make it clear to the individual about why you're reaching out and who you are. So to summarize, expanding your network strategically, we wanna think about these following items. Who should I reach out to on LinkedIn? Think about people that you have something in common with. Maybe you worked at the same company in the past or you graduated from the same school in the past. Or maybe people who are able to connect you to someone who can help you achieve your professional goals. When you think about, well, what should I say? First, explain who you are and then explain how you came across their profile and lastly, how can they help you? And so now we know how to expand our professional network on LinkedIn. We understand the elements to build out a great profile on LinkedIn. The last piece here is to make sure that you're sharing out your unique voice as a thought leader. And so how to maximize your personal brand engagement this is the best time to post on LinkedIn. And when we look at the days of the week, we would suggest Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, specifically 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., your local time. As we see, LinkedIn is used a lot by recruiters, salespeople, and business people. It's constantly being used throughout the work hours. So keep that in mind when you're making a post. The worst days to post are Saturdays and Sundays, right? We wanna make sure that everybody is recharging on the weekends. Um, and we do see that engagement tends to be a little lower on weekends as well as after work hours. So you might wanna avoid posting that. Did you know LinkedIn members are actually four times more likely to get hired when referred, right? So it's not just important to have a great profile and to build up connections, but to keep them engaged, right? making sure that you're actively posting on the LinkedIn newsfeed. A couple of examples of what to share. You might wanna provide an article on the industry news that you're following, maybe particular companies that you care about, or also highlighting your point of view by posting a comment on a particular post or article. Keep in mind, you also will always wanna provide any knowledge or expertise that you can offer to your network, maybe based on your own experience, as well as highlighting any career wins and achievements. When you're thinking about developing your brand, here's some tips for posting content. 
We know that we want to post at peak activity times. We want to post frequently. We would say one to two times a week at minimum. Always lead with a catchy line. Maybe ask a question to your network. Be responsive to those that comment on your post and reciprocate the favor to those that comment on your post. If you see that they've posted something interesting, interact with it or maybe share it out to your audience. Some other interesting pieces of data is that when including a link in that article or that post, it can actually drive twice the amount of engagement compared to posts without links. And posts with images generate actually 98% higher comment rate than posts without. And lastly, links to YouTube videos can play now directly within your newsfeed, and they actually generate 75% higher share rate. So as we wrap up here, the do's and don'ts for sharing content. Again, we do want to aim to share content at peak times to encourage engagement from our network. Mornings, maybe lunchtime, during the work week. Make sure you're always adding your voice to each piece of content that you're sharing, even if you're resharing somebody else's post. Always use images, videos, visuals on your post to ensure it stands out to your connections when they're browsing through their news feeds. What we want to avoid is avoid sharing the same type of content all the time, right? You know, maybe you're just posting about quarterly results on particular companies, you know, that, that doesn't really get in, give us any insight or flavor as to who you are as a professional, right? Also, try not to just click on the share button. Uh, you want to add in a comment to amplify your voice and to provide some context as to why are you sharing out this post or article. And last but not least, don't forget to interact with comments from others on your posts as interaction is key. And as we summarize our segment for today, keep in mind, you always want to consistently add value and engage with your network on LinkedIn. Invest in the time to update your profile in real time. Invest in the time to build out your connections, as well as requesting informational interviews, even if that company isn't currently hiring at the moment. When you're browsing through your LinkedIn newsfeed, you want to like, post and share things from people that are in your network and highlighting the things that you care about so that people can understand the professional that you are and what you can bring to the table. Third, join different LinkedIn groups and exchange insights with maybe some alumni from various schools or programs that you're a part of. And lastly, give testimonials and recommendations to others, but don't be afraid to also ask for them as well. Thank you so much for your time today and look forward to seeing you on LinkedIn.